What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 17 of our Bayer Leverkusen Let's Play here in Football Manager 2019 and while we are back once more and today we're taking on the reigning Bundesliga champions. Yes, that's right. Raisin Ball Spore Leipzig or Red Bull Leipzig. Let's be honest, no one is being fooled. It's Red Bull Leipzig and uh, yeah, we're going to be taking them on today in what, as I said, is playing the team who are top or were top of the Bundesliga last year. But you can see, if we just look at the league table going into this game, this table does not look like the league table I thought it would at the start of the year. We will go into the fixtures, but I mean, you can see here, Leipzig down in 10th, Bayern down in 8th. Uh, Dortmund have really fallen off the play pace now. They're five points behind us. I believe after last episode, they were one point ahead of us. And, uh, well, we are just in fine form in the league. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Europe, but we'll touch upon that in a second. Anyway, four games since you were last here. The first game, as you can see here, was against Frankfurt. We won this game 3-1. Paulino with the opener, good little goal for the young Brazilian, a player who um, has kind of started playing as our lone forward in this system. Of course, we've given Voland a number of opportunities, and last year he really was our leading goal scorer, Voland. He was that main man spearhead in the attacks, but with him not quite performing up to standards, Paulino's come in and he's made the most of the opportunity. He scored the first goal, and while Kai Havertz scored a fantastic free kick, Leon Bailey with a nice finish as well. And, uh, well, Nikolai Muller got a consolation for them in the last 10 minutes. A little bit of a shame to lose the clean sheet. But regardless, a great way to kick things off, particularly having lost Dortmund, obviously, last time out. Uh, bouncing back immediately with a really good result. The next game we had was against her for Berlin. And, well, you might notice here, three is kind of a magic number. It's, uh, there's been three goals scored by one team in all four of the games since you were last here. In this game, it was the Leon Bailey show once more. Uh, he grabbed a goal in the 32nd minute and followed it up with a neat little header uh, not long after in the 39th. Uh, for, well, for her for Berlin, they had a man sent off. Lassell uh, so was uh, sent off after 30 minutes. So that did open up opportunities. And while Bailey got two goals in the first half, and in the second half, he turned provider. And he got a lovely assist on Lucas Romero's strike. Not a bad finish at all for a complete right wing back. Really sledgehammering it home. Keeper, absolutely no chance. And uh, unlike the previous game, he kept a clean sheet, which was really, really good. Anyway, the preliminary game in this run of fixtures was against Monaco. It finished 3-0 to Monaco. And to be honest, they were just the better team in every regard in this game. I tried to change things a little bit throughout the game, tried to tweak things, but we just got completely overrun. Despite having more of the ball, Monaco created chance after chance. I mean, I think they had something like five clear-cut chances. Ronnie Lopez got the first. Uh, Golovin got a second. A little bit of a fortuitous kind of deflection bit of ping-pong in the box from a set piece. And then while well, Rafinha rounded off the route as we went in search of a late comeback, we left ourselves exposed at the back. It was a tap-in for him. And unfortunately for us, yeah, Monaco um, winning this game and kind of perhaps putting us back in our pay pay place. Kind of after beating United, I was feeling kind of confident uh, with that result. If we just look at the group, you can see here in Group F, uh, we find ourselves still in second ahead of United on head-to-head. -head. Um, but yeah, things could get interesting. Our next two games against Bilbao, two games that we really need to be winning... And I imagine the second of those two games, or probably when we'll be back next time. Anyway, one more game to talk about. Another 3-0 victory. Similar goal scorer in Paulino. Uh, it was not the most convincing of finishes. If I remember this goal correctly, it, it should have been scored first time. Eventually, we got it. A defensive error, leaving Paulino in. And, uh, well, two goals in the last 10 minutes made things more comfortable. Ryan Sessegnon getting off the mark for the club. A great moment for him uh, from a set piece. The header, I think it was Tat at the back post, was blocked and it well it fell mercifully to Sessegnon's feet who scored it and well Miguel Almiron right at the end of this game uh, grabbed a goal for his uh, well I think that's his third or fourth of the season he got man of the match in this game as well unfortunately if we just look at Almiron here um, you're going to see that he has got a injury out with a twisted ankle so not available for selection today but um, yeah he's really been chipping in with a decent kind of set of performances you can see a 7.35 average rating in the league uh, a really really good kind of turnaround so anyway we're going to today's game against Leipzig there isn't a whole lot in terms of team news uh, Pereira who we had on trial has left his trial I've decided not to sign him in terms of injuries I talked about the Almiron injury the only big one other than that is Victor Fischer 
It's been a little while since we've had a long-term injury, and well, it's a torn hamstring for Victor, which is a massive, massive shame. Of course, I wondered why we got him for such a bargain price of £4.5 million, but some of the injuries he has had during his time here might be an indicator of that. A third torn hamstring in his career, the second one this calendar year. That's something that we have kind of got to pay attention to. That's definitely on my radar, and I am wondering with this guy... If he is going to just keep getting injured, is it worth trying to sell him whilst he's fit? Potentially, he's such a good player on his day, but unfortunately, these recurring injuries becoming a problem. The only other player besides the two midfielders is Voland, who's out. He is only out for a day. I can't even remember what the injury was now. It must have been something pretty minor. You can see here, actually. It was a tight hamstring. So, on the grand scheme of things, I feel like a tight hamstring versus a torn hamstring is quite a different scenario. However, we are going to have him on the bench for today's game. Anyway, when it comes to our team selection, um, we've kind of started to settle a bit more on a team as a whole. It hasn't changed that much at the back, really. We still go with Fradeski in goal. Um, in terms of the back four, right at the moment, Ryan Sessegnon is currently being dropped in favour of Vendel, who just offers a lot more defensively, and I think particularly in this kind of game can really do a job for us. Uh, we then have at centre-back, Retzos and Jonathan Tah. Uh, Retzos actually dropped by the Greece manager on the international stage for the games that just took place. Uh, this is the first game back after the international break, which is why Leon Bailey is on the bench struggling for fitness. But yes, Jonathan Tah going to be playing that right centre-back role for us, of course. Uh, continuing to develop a little bit this year, which is great to see. Vice are going to play complete wing-back. We're then going to go with Sven Bender at Anchorman. In terms of our midfield duo, I'm kind of starting to settle now on uh, Piquetta and Palacios. Piquetta's putting in some really good performances in the league. Three assists in six games in the league. Um, in terms of as a centre mid on attack, he is pretty well suited to this. I feel like him and Almiron are quite interchangeable in this role. Of course, Piquetta can play the Roman playmaker. But that role really has been locked down by Palacios so far this season. You can see here a 7.23 average rating in the league. He is looking very, very good in this midfield playmaker role that he's kind of slotted into for us. And at 21 years old, he's showing tremendous kind of maturity with his performances, really showing why he deserves to be in the Argentine national team. In the final third, due to the Voland injury, uh, there is a bit of a shake around. And of course, Leon Bailey being out. Uh, we are going to go with Paulino at inside forward. Uh, Paulino has been in pretty good goal scoring form lately. You can see three goals and one assist in his last five. However, most of that has come from being as the lone striker. As a result of the injury situation, we're going to have Julian Brandt playing out on the right-hand side. Julian has just not really impressed me, to be honest. In the time that we've been at the club, he's never really shone. Even this year, he's been lacking a little bit. I'm really hoping he can step up today for us. And up top, complete forward, we're going to go with Origi, who is still trying to hunt out that first league goal at the club. Um, maybe this can be the game for him to do it. We have got options on the bench. Volan could come on if necessary. Of course, we've got Ben Yedda, who really has found himself out of favour at the club as an option who we could definitely bring on. Um, he's a very talented forward. It, he probably deserves a little bit more first-team football than we've been giving him. But with Polino finding some form as the striker, there really hasn't been a spot in the team for Ben Yedda because I have been dropping Voland in favour of Paulino in a fair few games. Anyway, other players on the bench, we've got Kai Havertz. Fallen out of favour a little bit, having played so much regular first-team football last year. But regardless, he still made seven appearances. Four of those have been on off the bench, but he has been a great impact player for us. We then have Lucas Romero, Ryan Sessegnon, and then we've gone with uh, Pongorashic uh, as our centre-back on the bench ahead of core. Um, there isn't really a reason behind this other than the fact that I actually am starting to favour Marin over him. Uh, Marin not necessarily as good defensively, but as a player who can come on and really make an impact, um, he can come into the midfield and add a bit of a creative spark from deep, which is something that I kind of like having in our back pocket. Anyway, let's get into today's game. It's against Leipzig, who, as I mentioned, have been struggling as of late. If we just look at the opposition report here, um, you can see their last five games, they've really not done that well. They've drawn four and lost one against Werder Bremen. It can be interesting to see how we do get on against them today. Uh, Werner has got a great goal-scoring record against us in live commentaries. Of course, we did beat them at the start of the season in the German Super Cup. They've kind of emerged Leipzig as one of our big rivals. And, well, I'm hoping and praying that today we can get a win over them. And it would be our first win in 90 minutes if we could do it. They have been struggling to win. We've been doing really, really well in the league. And, um, well, knowing my luck because of those factors, we'll probably lose this game 2-0 or something. 
that's usually how these things go. Uh, anyway, I selected an answer and the game is confused. Right, let's just get into it. Let's just run out the tunnel. I don't have time for these pre-game interviews if they're going to take forever to set up. And, uh, well, let's see how we get on here. Set piece, something that we have made a lot of this year. Back post, Julian Brandt, that was a chance. That was a really good chance, headed over the crossbar. Um, I talked about, you know, earlier on in this season, the fact I have kind of set up my set pieces a little bit more than I did last year. I do feel like we have reaped the benefits of those. There's definitely been uh, a game plan that's been action and we've been doing well. And, well, we need to defend here. Leipzig hitting the woodwork. That's not really the start you want to see here. Um, they've actually had a hell of a lot of possession in the first 15 minutes, which is perhaps cause for concern given our controlling style of play. I don't want to make any changes too rashly too soon, but not the best start for us. But, well, maybe we can score against the run of play. That's got to be the dream. Um, interesting to see that they appear to have dropped their 4-4-2 four, four, that they used last year to win the league. I don't know if they've had a change in management personnel, but, yeah, they won the league with a 4-4-2 four, four, and they've now ditched it. Anyway, we're going to try and punish them here. Julian Brandt, is that a pen? No, it's not. I was hoping it was going to be a clumsy tackle into the back instead. Opens up the opportunity for the counter-attack. And while loads of space here for Sabitzer, who just sledgehammers it home. They probably deserve that on the balance of play. Not a very good start at all to this game. In terms of what I want to do here, I could go to the Gengen Press style. Um, I have, on a few occasions this year, switched to this system. I feel like it's a pretty good system uh, to deploy in games where we're just struggling to get hold of the ball. And that is definitely something that's kind of happened here. So we'll make this change. We'll see if it can work out for us. You can see they've had 70% of possession after 20 minutes. We're trying to play a controlling style of football. It's not really worked for us. We're going to um, you know, revert back to a system that we used a variant of last year. Um, it's, a, it's a system that really can work for us. And hopefully we're going to reap the benefits of that as we try and adapt our game plan on the fly. Um We've used the control system a lot. As I said, there has been a few games where I have struggled for possession a little and I changed things up. Um, but I have largely resorted to going back to our, you know, the style of football that we started with here. Um, but in this game here, it's just not working. Leipzig creating a fair few chances. Possession still very much in their favour at half time, perhaps fortunate for it only to be 1 0. Um, we need to change some stuff here. Julian Brandt's having an absolute disaster of a game. Vendel. The only player really to write home about in terms of performance. Right, guys, show me something else in the second half. In terms of changes, I'm going to take off Julian Brandt. I'm going to do it. I'm going to drop him. I'm going to bring in Paulino to left wing. And then we're going to bring in... I'm going to bring in Volland. I know he's only out for one more day. I probably could have risked him from the start, but I decided not to. But Julian Brandt, just another disappointing display by the German uh, inside forward. We need to change things up. I'm hoping Volland kind of coming in and then Paulino going out wide on the left might be able to open up some opportunities for us uh, in the final third. We'll have to see how we get on. You can see see actually looking at their system, they're persisting with this 4-2-3-1, which seems to be working pretty well. Um, we need Do we need to adapt? Do we need to change some more stuff? I mean, there's only so much time left in this game. I feel like we've got to be a bit more direct in our play, to be honest. Keep the higher tempo going. Um, I guess we'll keep the pressure high, but really I need to be more direct. We need to be less conservative with our play. We will look for the overlaps. But um, yeah, we, we need to do more in this match. And uh, I think maybe changing the, the system to be a little more direct uh, might be the way to go. Uh, I am going to make a change. I am going to bring on Leon Bailey, actually, our star player. A bit of an injury risk, perhaps, but with 20 minutes left, we need a spark in this game. And he's the player who, throughout this year, we've been reliably able to, well, turn to, I guess. Uh, I did have a chance to play him in this game. I decided not to start him. I don't want to risk an injury. He's in such great form, the Jamaican international. And uh, given where we are in the league, it just felt like an unnecessary risk. You know, if we were still really chasing the top pack, um, I might have changed it more. I might have been willing to take that risk. But when we are top of the league, as we are... Um, I kind of was a bit more willing to, you know, not play him necessarily, risk dropping a few points. And while Volland beats the offside trap, can he finish it? He can. He goes round the keeper, who actually got a toe to it. And, uh, well, we get a goal. A big ball over the top. Volland on off the bench. Leipzig looked like they tried to play a uh, an offside trap, and it just didn't work. They completely mistimed it. Palacios, what a ball that is. Can we discuss that pass? That was absolutely filthy. 
Keeper actually, I think, denies the assist by getting that initial stop. But regardless, 1-1 one, one here, 15 minutes left. Stats pretty even, and we have momentum now on our side. Five minutes left, I could make one last change. Who would I bring on, really? I guess I'd bring in Kai Havertz for Pocato, who's not had the best of games. Six minutes left, Origi trying to make a run down the side. It's a pointless highlight prior to our sub, Jack. Why are you getting excited about even the prospect of a goal? Two minutes. I mean, a draw wouldn't be the worst result in the world away from home against the reigning champions, but given their form, you expect a little bit more. Maybe a chance here. It could be the last chance of the game if we can even get it into the box, and we can't. Voland wins it, but the ref denies us. 1-1, one, one, it's going to finish here. To be honest, given how the first half of that game went, I'm kind of relieved to come away with a point. We grew into the game, I think, once we started actually being a bit more direct and a little bit more attacking, it worked. Um, the tactical changes seem to work in our favour. And that point could prove crucial. If we just look at the results here, you can see uh, Dortmund won 1-0. Bayern are going to play Hamburger now. We'll see how they get on there. Uh, and actually, Wolfsburg play tomorrow. And Wolfsburg have actually kind of emerged as one of the big threats to us. Um, no one can leapfrog us with any games in hand. So we've not got that to worry about. I mean, I'd love to see Bayern slip up again here against Hamburger. Can Hamburger do us a favour? No, they can't. They get absolutely demolished 5-0, which does see now uh, Bayern move one point behind Hamburger, but with significantly better goal difference. You can see here, Bayern have lost against Mainz uh, ourselves and Leipzig, all 2-1 away from home. Mainz this year looking very, very solid indeed. On the Dortmund side of things, they've lost against Schalke and Stuttgart, two teams who you'd expect them to beat, really. Obviously, we've just drawn against Leipzig and lost away from home against Dortmund. Um, generally speaking, I think we're doing pretty well at the moment, considering how tricky our opening fixtures have been. You know, we've played um, who at the start of the season you would have considered our three main rivals in Bayern, Dortmund and Leipzig. And to only have lost one of those games is pretty good going as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, in terms of when we'll be back next time, guys, I think it'll probably be for the game against Bilbao in the Champions League. That could prove quite a turning point of a match. Um, you know, if we can beat Bilbao in our first game against them, it would put us in a commanding position. And well, considering that they are the quote unquote lowest seed and weakest team in the league or in the group that we're in, we need to be beating them. And that away game could prove quite pivotal in our uh, qualifying campaign. But anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you have, do leave a like on it. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.